If you have Mexican roots, your DNA might be carrying one of the most complex, layered and surprising genetic stories in the world. We're not just talking about a mix of indigenous and Spanish ancestry. There's much more beneath the surface. From the first settlers of the Americas to forgotten trade routes connecting Asia, Africa and Europe, Mexican DNA is a living map of history. In this video, we'll explore how these deep, diverse origins have left traces in our bodies, our families and our identities. You're about to find out why Mexican DNA doesn't just tell one story, it tells thousands. Long before the rise of pyramids or the Spanish ships, the land we now call Mexico was home to some of the first people in the Americas. Around 15,000 years ago, small groups of humans crossed from Siberia into North America over a frozen land bridge called Beringia. These early settlers spread southward, eventually reaching what would become Central and South America. Genetic evidence from indigenous communities in Mexico still carries the imprint of those first migrations. Scientists have found that some native Mexican groups like the Mict or the Tarahumara preserve rare DNA lineages that go all the way back to those ancient pioneers. What makes this even more mysterious is how that early DNA survived. Despite centuries of invasion, disease and mixing, these ancient genes haven't disappeared. Instead, they've quietly endured in mountain villages, desert towns and even in the blood of modern city dwellers. Some of these DNA markers are so unique that researchers use them to trace the very first paths humans took into the new world. In Mexico, you're not just carrying a blend, you're carrying the legacy of the first Americans. And that ancient signal still speaks through cheekbones, blood types and genetic memory passed down for thousands of years. The story of Mexican DNA gets even richer when we reach the age of empires, Maya, Aztec, Zapotec. Mixtec, Olmec, each one a powerful civilization, each one contributing its own cultural and genetic layers. These societies didn't just build cities, write calendars and map the stars. They also shaped who we are genetically. Through trade, warfare and alliances, they created networks of movement that allowed DNA to spread across regions. A person living in the Valley of Mexico might have ancestors from the Yucatan Chiapas or the Gulf Coast, connections forged long before Europeans arrived. Archaeogenetic studies now show that there wasn't one indigenous look or ancestry. Instead, there was a diverse mosaic of lineages with different adaptations. Some had stronger resistance to altitude, others to tropical disease. These subtle differences forged over centuries helped build the genetic foundation of modern Mexicans. When you look at your family, you might see skin tones that range from light to dark, or facial features that hint at both mountain and jungle roots. That's no accident. It's a reflection of deep Mesoamerican complexity. These empires may have risen and fallen, but their DNA didn't disappear. It lives on in the everyday people of Mexico, encoded in bones, blood and memories. Then came the 1500s, a turning point that transformed Mexico's genetic landscape forever. The Spanish conquest brought more than soldiers and priests. It brought bloodlines from every corner of Europe and soon after from Africa and Asia too. Spanish settlers didn't all come from the same region. Some carried Basque, Andalusian or even North African genes from centuries of Moorish rule. This added another layer to the developing Mexican DNA. African ancestry entered during the transatlantic slave trade. Tens of thousands of enslaved Africans were brought to New Spain. Veracruz, for example, became a major entry point. Many African genetic lineages, like the L. mitochondrial haplogroup, remain present today, especially along the coasts and in southern regions. But here's the twist. Asian DNA also arrived through a lesser-known route, the Manila Galleon trade. From the late 1500s to the early 1800s, ships traveled between the Philippines and Mexico, bringing goods, culture, and people. Some Filipinos and South Asians settled and intermarried. In places like Guerrero, there are still people with genetic markers linked to Southeast Asia. All of this mixing didn't erase indigenous ancestry, it layered onto it. Mexican DNA became a living archive of continents converging. That's why, you know, no two Mexicans look exactly alike. Behind every face is a global history. Despite centuries of colonization and cultural transformation, indigenous DNA never vanished. It adapted, survived, and in many regions stayed strong. In states like Oaxaca, Chiapas, and Yucatan, indigenous ancestry still dominates the genetic profile. 
Communities that remained geographically isolated up in the mountains or deep in jungles became genetic time capsules. They preserved rare alleles and haplogroups that give scientists a window into ancient Mesoamerican life. What's even more mysterious is how these isolated groups experience what geneticists call genetic drift. That means certain traits became more common just by chance, like unique facial features, resistance to certain diseases, or even rare blood types. At the same time, some indigenous genes quietly blended into the broader mestizo population. You might have no idea your great-grandmother spoke Mixtec, but your DNA might carry the echo. In cities like Mexico City or Puebla, people walk around with deeply indigenous DNA, often without knowing it. That's the quiet power of resilience. It doesn't always announce itself, but it never disappears. And that's part of what makes Mexican DNA so mysterious. It's a constant negotiation between visibility and invisibility, between erasure and endurance. The genes tell us that indigenous Mexico isn't in the past. It's still here, woven into every part of the national identity. Today, scientists studying Mexican DNA are constantly uncovering surprises, gene variants they've never seen before, adaptations shaped by unique geography, and clues about ancient migrations hidden in plain sight. One of the most exciting discoveries came when researchers found a high prevalence of a gene variant linked to altitude resistance in people from Oaxaca. This suggests that some indigenous ancestors adapted over generations to survive in mountainous terrain much like Tibetans did in Asia. That same study found genetic traits connected to better glucose regulation and stronger immune responses, traits likely shaped by the physical demands and dietary patterns of ancient agricultural societies. In some Mexican populations, researchers have found traces of genetic variants linked to ancient Asian lineages, confirming the hidden legacy of the Manila galleon trade. Others have identified mitochondrial DNA sequences that don't appear anywhere else in the world, variants so rare they suggest truly isolated branches of indigenous ancestry that survived untouched for centuries. But what's perhaps most mysterious is how many health conditions also follow these patterns. From diabetes to high-altitude sickness to certain types of cancer risk, Mexican genetics can behave differently than European or East Asian genomes. That's why it's not just about identity, it's also about medicine, public health, and understanding the body in context. Mexican DNA doesn't fit neatly into categories. It's layered, adaptive, and full of clues we're only starting to understand. And with every genome sequenced, the story gets deeper, more personal, and more powerful. Mexican DNA isn't just a record, it's a mystery still unfolding. The journey of Mexican DNA didn't stop at the borders. Millions of Mexicans have migrated to the United States, Canada, and beyond, carrying their unique genetic heritage with them. In cities like Los Angeles, Houston, and Chicago, scientists studying Mexican-American populations are discovering how indigenous, European, African, and Asian ancestry continue to evolve across generations. What's fascinating is how some traits persist even after generations of mixing. Certain indigenous markers, for example, still appear in the DNA of Mexican-Americans whose families left Mexico decades ago. Others show health patterns tied to genetics that doctors in other countries may not yet fully understand. As families grow and mix with other communities abroad, the Mexican genome keeps adapting, changing, yet, you know, still preserving its roots. It becomes part of the global story. Whether someone speaks Spanish, English, or Spanglish, their blood carries the memory of temples, markets, deserts, and oceans. The diaspora is proof that Mexican DNA doesn't just survive. It travels, evolves, and continues to connect people across continents. If you enjoyed this journey through history and identity, please like the video and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Mexican DNA isn't just a mix, it's a living time capsule. It holds the footsteps of the first Americans, the innovations of ancient empires, the scars and resilience of colonization, and the echoes of Asia, Africa, and Europe. It's not one story, it's many. If you carry it, you're holding a legacy shaped by survival, adaptation, and memory. So look in the mirror and know your DNA is a map, and it's still telling its story every day.